We believe that our world is controlled by giant multinationals, corporate media and their stooges in government who put short-term profit before long-term well-being. Though this corporate takeover is across the world, we focus on the pig industry. So we make films that support and inform shoppers of the true cost of factory pig farming and show how using the power of our purse to only buy meat with a high welfare label can we close factory pig farms and create a better, more humane, healthier world. Of course, we're just a part of a myriad of NGOs to uh, fight to, uh, to challenge this corporate control over our lives. The new statesman named James Thornton as one of the 10 people who could change the world. He's a brilliant lawyer and founder of Client Earth, who's suing governments and corporations on behalf of his only client, the Earth. I quote him. The dominant story shaping Europeans' thoughts and actions was once Christianity. In the West to what today, it's liberal capitalism. It has profound consequences, including for the environment, because our current story places no value on anything other than economic growth and gives us no other role except to be consumers. If we want to change the world, we're going to have to change our society to a positive vision. People will be valued and nature will be treated as our teacher. End of quote. He is such a star. I would suggest that we, the 99%, have an important role in this positive vision. However, the little progress that the green conscious movement has made is largely due to the propaganda from the all-pervasive corporate media spreading inaccurate myths. In 1929, the pioneer in the field of propaganda, Edward Bernays, said, and I quote, the conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. End quote. This conscious manipulation continues to shape our thoughts today, not least in the food system. Henry Kissinger, former Secretary of State and Cold War strategist and hero of stooges of the deep state, like Hillary Clinton, remarked in 1970, and I quote, Control oil and you control nations. Control food and you control the people. End quote. So this U.S. strategy deliberately destroyed family farming in the U.S. and abroad and led to 95% of all grain reserves in the world being under the control of six multinational agri-corporations. With trade treaties signed by stooge governments forcing open economies around the globe, corporations are free, free to comb the globe for ever cheaper labor and ever lower environmental and standards at work. Compliant governments facilitate the so-called free trade system by giving massive direct subsidies, i.e. financial taxpayer-funded handouts like the Common Agricultural Policy and favorable development bank loans and indirect subsidies like research and development infrastructure like transport and roads, and by bearing the cost of the cheap of the cleanup, i.e. sick people and sick planet. Direct subsidies are often facilitated via central banks like the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development. So I made a film about this European Bank for Reconstruction and Development and the $100 million of taxpayer subsidized loan to Smithfield Foods of America the biggest pig factory in the world to come to Poland to basically flood the EU economy of its cheap meat. <coughs> if the government doesn't subscribe to this corporate dominance and their treaties, it is condemned as being part of the axis of evil. And false flag events are contrived to weaken 
and even overthrow the governments. For example, in Iraq, the myth of the weapons of mass destruction. Libya, fictitious humanitarian grounds. Syria, fictitious reports of bombing his own people. And the drums are now beating for war with Iraq. I mean, sorry, with Iran. A recent survey reported that the Americans were ready and willing to go to war with Russia. Such is the power of the US media machine. And don't take my word alone for this power of the military industrial complex. I'm sure you've all seen Pilger's films. If you haven't, watch them, because they will really show you what's going on in the world. So, um, subsidized by Western banks and corporations, they grab land from family farmers and transform them into vast monocultures. Jobs are promised, but in reality, industrial farms replace labor with machines and chemicals, i.e. pesticides and herbicides, to grow crops to feed us and our livestock. The volume of pesticides and the destruction of habitat have turned wildlife, turned farmland into a wildlife desert. The abundance of flying insects has plunged by three quarters over the large, last 25 years. According to the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, at current rates of soil loss, largely driven by poor farming. We have just 60 years of harvests left. Even the Environmental Secretary, Michael Gove, has warned that the UK is 30 to 40 years away from, and I quote, the fundamental eradication of soil fertility, end of quote. I, nothing will grow in parts of the country. I'd hoped this minister was going to be quite a leader, until recently, he voted to renew the license on glyphosate, even though the World Health Organization has said that it probably causes cancer. The livestock industry lobbies pays the propaganda machine to persuade ever more people to eat ever more cheap meat. But at what cost? In terms of eating excess meat, the direct cost to humans is diseases, like obesity, diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. As our family farmers, unless we come to their rescue by buying their food, they are doomed. To avoid bankruptcy from cheap pork imports, farmers are forced to cram ever more pork pigs into their sheds or incur massive debts by getting vast sheds and selling their cheap pork to massive corporations and the supermarkets. Now, please, could I have the film? So the result of this is systemic cruelty. But let me just show you by pictures. I hope everybody's... so we're not caught. The mother pigs are in these crates for one week before they give birth, and then three to four weeks while they suckle their babies. This pig can't get up. It's tried twice, and this is legal. It's really horrible the way these babies are born on those slats. This is where the mother pig is kept when she's not in the crate. Dark, dank, no manipulatable material, which is illegal. When the pigs are raised in these sort of conditions, they scratch, they bite each other's tails off. And this farmer has simply cut the tails off. Now, that is not allowed. What's that fox doing? Oh, my God, he was eating the dead pig. And dead piglets are being devoured by maggots. Sheds like this become a breeding ground for antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So this is leading us ever closer to the time when antibiotics won't work as a cure for human diseases. Only by high welfare meat, RSPCA assured, outdoor bred, free range, or best of all, organic. 
also, also in these factory farms, you have to dispose of hundreds of thousands of tons of animal feces, which is polluting the rivers and the air. It's contributing millions of tons of CO2 in the form of methane, i.e. the greenhouse effect. And out of these sheds come toxic bioaerosols, e.g. dust and bacteria, and gases like ammonia and hydrogen sulfide that both poison those who work in and who live near these animal factories. Forests in South America are depleted to grow animal feed like soya. Seas are depleted to feed the pigs with fish. Factory farms are dependent on massive amount of water, both for the pigs to drink and to clean the sheds. Family farmers are bankrupted and rural communities disappear as banks take all the profits. <laughs> you know, the Chinese have bought Smithfield. So they actually realize now that these factory farms can stay here and the port goes to China. So they avoid all of those costs. Bobby Kennedy, the US president, Jack Kennedy's nephew and environmental lawyer said that factory farms can't produce pork than a family farmer unless they break the law. Now, I told you in that film how many laws are being broken. Now, once I've armed somebody with the horrors of factory farming, I always ask a very loaded question. Would you buy meat from a high welfare farm? And they say, yes, if it's more expensive. And what difference does it make if I do it on my own? So I started to make films. And we made a film called Pig Business. And we also, that went on Channel 4. But wow, Smithfield tried to sue them literally up to two hours before bro um, broadcast. But then afterwards, they didn't do anything because they knew it was true. Um, so let me see where I'm going to go next. OK, so um, we also help local people fight planning applications. So in Foston, Derbyshire, there was a 25,000 pig pig shed that's trying to get planning permission. The locals were incredibly active, and we helped them get pro bono lawyers. We helped them with money. We helped them get publicity. And we did a, a local show for them with films and speakers. And although the, they have Midland pig producers have been given a permit, the rules have been so stringent that they haven't dared resubmit their application. For example, if the um, air scrubber breaks, they have to move all 25,000 pigs. Well, where to? So we're now fighting um, Limavadi has this terrifying 27,000 pig, pig factory. And we're helping them with lots of other NGOs. But also what's really important is how active the local groups are. So um, what is terrifying about this one is that actually, there's no money to be made out of selling the pigs. There's no money to be made out of selling feed. The only money to be made by the big investor is because they're giving a subsidy to run the anaerobic digester. Because the anaerobic digester will take the methane from the biodegrading feces to make renewable energy. So again, it's these subsidies that are promoting this terrifying system in the name of so-called renewable energy. So now we're focusing on small films in the UK. And thanks to celebrities carrying our message, we have reached 25,000 Facebook followers. Our turn your nose up at pig factories has um, included Jeremy Irons, and it reached 1.3 million views. And together, the series had 4.5 million views. So Rooting for Real Farms is our present project, where we have chefs and their farmers who, for example, we had Petersham Nurseries and their son, who was the fabulous farmer producing the pork. And these have reached 600,000 views. So if anybody has any farmer or any high welfare food restaurant who might want a bit of publicity, we'd be willing to go and give them some space on our very, very popular forum site. But would you come and talk to me about it? And also, we like foodies. If you know any foodie people like Liz Earl, we're going to feature her. Um, and then we want to do one called the, For the Great and the Good. So people like Jane Goodall, who's got 1.1 million followers on Facebook. And if she was to say why she would never buy um, pork or any meat from a factory farm. OK, so that's the end, is it? Huh?
Uh. Okay, so also we make, um, we've got a high welfare directory on our website, so you can find the high welfare labels that we mentioned here. And we're also doing films called Love Pigs. So if anybody knows of a pig farmer who's got a youngster that knows and loves the pigs, like on Harry's farm, we filmed his little boy, um, we'd like to come and film. Also, we do fox pops by speaking to people basically in the street. So by focusing on the pig industry, I hope that people will start to look at the label of other meats and always look for high welfare labels. And this invariably comes from small or medium-sized farms. This way, money stays in the local community. Good for the pigs, our health, and yes, it might be a bit more expensive at the supermarket till because the true cost is not included. But shoppers can spread the cost by eating less meat and thereby avoiding the illnesses I mentioned. So instead of buying two sausages from a factory farm, you can buy one and a half from a happy pig farm. So it's a win-win for people and the planet. And it certainly proves that our purse has more power than just crossing a ballot box once every four or five years. Thank you.